I do not have another $600 to bring another action, especially when I feel it will be dealt with in the same manner. I have copies of the permit that the county issued in violation of its own ordinance, but again, it is how the county deals with the citizens and the questions that I feel need to be looked at is, uh, as to the intent of the board then. It's, thank you. Ms. Lambert, do you want to, do you want to give us the copies that you have now or? Okay. Mr. Whiteman, I know you're not really working here, but if you could grab those from her, I'd appreciate it. And just, you can grab them from him. That was okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of the public comment section? Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comments? Is there anyone else? Hearing none, we're going to declare public comment to be closed. And uh, I think the board was discussing the fundraiser issue during the break uh, separately. This is uh, Cosby. What do you think we can do? Um. Because the ordinance doesn't include any provision for a waiver as such, um, there, isn't, there isn't a waiver that can be granted. If the board wanted to amend the ordinance to provide for either a, a modification as to who's subject to the itinerant merchant tax or um, to the extent it's allowed by the Code of Virginia, you know, some type of waiver provision, you know, that could certainly be looked at. But because the ordinance doesn't currently allow you to grant a waiver, Unfortunately, you can't grant a waiver that's requested at this time. Okay, and there's, um, my thought was some sort of emergency ordinance adoption or emergency modification, and you're saying we probably can't do that because there's not a... Well, generally emergency. speaking, emergency ordinances are adopted when there's a public health and safety issue such that, you know, going through the process of having the typical, you know, public hearing. Because obviously, the ordinance um, statutes require you to have, you know, the public hearing that everybody gives notice of and a chance to come and speak. So, in order to have the emergency, there, generally speaking, has to be found a, you know, a public emergency. So, so is there a way? Let me do one one more try. Is is there a way that 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 maybe? Of course, we have this authority, but the, the board could request from the Commissioner of Revenue to not enforce it that day, whether that's right or wrong is another story, but that well, would be the only I, opportunity. I think one provision may be to, you know, maybe allow our office to go back and look at what was adopted and see if there's any, if there's any wiggle room, if you will, in the ordinance. Okay. Um, we don't actually meet then, again on before there, we don't meet again until after this event would take place. So you could find out. You could find out, and perhaps the next week, and then we do the same thing. If you let Mr. Parton know, and he could let the folks at the library know. Yes. Okay. Can I, have, I have a question. Uh, we make contributions to nonprofit organizations uh, in, in other cases. Oh. Now, I think Ms. Sumter indicated that there were three vendors that had canceled thus far. Uh, what do you get per, per vendor? $35 is the county fee. $25? My question is, in order to help out, I don't know that we can address this issue before it's going to impact the event that the library board wants to, wants to have. I know the same thing happened uh, when Ladysmith Day was held uh, back in the spring of the year in May. That the, the same thing happened. We, we lost a number of vendors. Now, I believe it was like 20 vendors, but there was a large number of vendors that dropped out because of the fee that they were having to pay to the county. And, and Mrs. Uh, Carter and I have, have briefly chatted about that, and <clears throat> we were going to get together with 
the people involved to have a meeting to see what how we could work that out. But my suggestion would be if we can do it is to make a contribution to the to the library for the three vendors that have dropped out, uh, and it makes them whole for the most part for at least this event, and it gives us more time to try to address to address the they're issue. Gonna, they're going to have more than three because they have been three dropped out, but they yeah, may have more than three, so we'd be paying maybe ten. How well, many I, vendors well, I think do you we have to? Two at the thirty-two, and seven are from outside the county. And they're the ones that are basically impacted. Is that correct? Are the ones outside the county? Most of the people inside the county have a permit or may or may not. They've already paid probably if they're inside the county in some way or another. Okay, she she basically said that they've already gotten to the minimum. So, okay. Um, so you could have, I mean, at the most, it's going to be seven. And I think we can, if you will, we can cap it at, at three or four. Uh, it's at least it's going to help the library board out. It's not going to put them in a position where they have a complete washout. Yeah, I, I, I was actually, you and I are probably the same mind uh, to, to donate back from the board to the library folks so they can give the money directly back to the vendors um, and make them whole. Up, up to seven? Yeah. Okay. They're going to have to pay the thirty-five dollars, the twenty-five dollars. I want to make the library board whole. Right, I'm sorry. I, you know, if the vendors are willing to pay that from outside of the county, and it only applies to people out, the vendors outside of the county. Yeah. So if so, those, so. right? But if but if those are willing to pay the the twenty-five dollars or thirty-five dollar fee, whatever it is, do you know what? Thirty. I think it's thirty. Okay, thirty dollar okay. fee. Then, you know, I'm not. Why were we going to say we reimburse them? I want to make the library whole. And if the library has three <clears throat> vendors that have dropped out because of that license fee, then we would make the library whole. Then the library would basically tell the vendors, we'll pay, the library will pay for your fee. Then the library would come back to us and say, we had three, four extra fees, and we'd pay that back to the library. I don't see it that way. My, okay. my issue was... Let's make the library whole. They would receive, out of those seven, they would have received $25, right, $25. So $175 is what they would have received from those vendors. If they receive everything with the exception of $75, then we'll make the, we'll make the library whole. We give them $75. Why are we then reimbursing the vendors that are inside of the county? I don't understand that. I, 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 my thought process was being that, that we don't want them to come think that we're trying to just gouge a, a vendor just because we're, we're more asking them to do a, a charity event. I guess that's my thought process. And the the right. idea, uh, Mr. Akers, if I can address it, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. is to help the, the event grow. We don't want to turn away vendors who would possibly be there. Again, it's to make this event as large as possible for residents of the county and it is a fundraiser <coughs> for the library. This is a way that we don't turn people away and hopefully they would attract more people to the to the library festival. So it's a fundraiser. Right, but we're going to address the issue. I believe this board well, is going to address this issue before it happens again. I think but, in some form or fashion we're going to address this issue. But it, but it, happens, by, but it happens after but it, the fact. But it happens not but it happens not just with the library. Right. It also may happen with a another nonprofit group that has vendors come in. So, so we need to address you're, it. You're right. right. We do have right. to address the issue in the short term right. since we don't meet again before December 3rd. We're either going to decide, and, and we're spending more money here than, than what it's worth, but we're saying 75 or $175 is what we're going to donate back to the library. But if people know, if the vendors on their side know, hey, I don't have to pay anything, it, it may... They grow some, and I'm saying the county is then going to have to pick up a larger share. I want to make the library a whole. Right now, they have seven vendors from outside of the county that have signed up for them. And I guess you're looking at three, you're dropping out, or you're talking about you had ten and you only have seven left. You had seven and three dropped out. Right, I, and, and I just dropped. want to make them whole. And I'm just saying, if if that's the case, if those three dropped out, let's let's reimburse the. Okay. The library for those, 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 are, those are the two options. 
Seventy-five dollars, hundred seventy-five dollars. How do you want to handle it? Let me just, Mr. Underwood. What I think you're saying is rather than have turn those vendors away, Absolutely. let's 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 tell them to come. Their fee's been taken care of, so that they come and then next year we have it resolved. They don't lose them as a vendor for forever. Seventy-five I'm not or one seventy-five. I'm not going to argue about it. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, we got it. We got it. It's right. sold. Sold. Okay, because I'm. We're with done. You. We're at 175, and that's it. Is there a motion to that effect? We're gone. We're moving on. We're gonna. We're gonna. Re, we're gonna donate back to the library 175 dollars at the end of this event. Let me make up, sure. We, up to 175. Let me make sure that the library is clear on what we're doing. That's my only concern. Since they're sitting there looking at us, not sure what we've done. That's and we're talking about 100 dollars. What I guess with the motion, and I'll try to do this as a motion, Mr. Chairman. If you wish. Um. We will donate to the library the business fee for those businesses outside of the county so that they participate in the library event for this year. That way you don't lose any vendors. So my motion is we donate to the library so they enable those vendors that are outside the county to come with their fee taken care of by the county and, and the donation back after the event when we know what the cost is up to $175. Second. All right. Motion made by Mr. Seely, and I believe that's what we're saying, and we spent $175 discussing it. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. Underwood. All those in favor say aye. Uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. So that takes your library fund. Uh, takes your library fundraiser. Um, Mr. Fincham, at some point in time, we will need to talk to you about how the BZA process worked in this particular case. Um, and the BZA, as the board knows, we recommend appointments to the BZA, and the court actually makes those appointments. So they are theoretically not part of the county or not under the county uh, authority or anything. They're a totally independent agency. Um, and I guess there was, for Mrs. Lambert, some lack of communication or the ability to ask a question to the county attorney. And um, if it's okay with you, can we give her five minutes during the break? Absolutely. Okay. So we'll work out during the break. We take uh, some point during the evening where you can have a chance to talk to her and, and we'll at least try to get further through this process. But we want to make every effort on the county's part to make sure you're at least heard and you feel like you're heard. So we're going to move from there to agenda item number four which is the condemnation of property for the Carolines Waterline Extension Project. Um, this is yours. Oh, okay. We had, just so the board will know, we had two properties that were, that we were unable to contact the owners, and subsequently we have no other alternative but to condemn the property to continue this project. This is Neil Cosby. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> As I'm part of the water line upgrade, I'm good for we needed to do okay. this is the first step in the process. Okay. You have the uh, resolution in front of you that would achieve uh, that end. Okay, Mr. I'm Jones. not sure what I did with it, but okay. Any questions of uh, staff at this time? Thank you, sir. No questions? All right. Um, don't see anybody here that would probably object, but okay. We will declare the public hearing for the condemnation of property for the Carolines Waterline Extension Project to be open. Is there anyone who'd like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who'd like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who'd like to speak regarding this matter? Hearing none, the public hearing is declared closed. How does the board wish to uh, proceed with this item? I'll make a motion we uh, go forward with the condemnation proceedings as uh, presented by staff. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Popowitz, seconded by Mr. Seeley. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> nay. Nay. You want to abstain? Um, you want to abstain? Mr. Un Underwood, you want to abstain, don't you? I'd rather abstain, but you'd rather abstain? Yes. Would you want <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you got excited. I, I understand. I, yeah. Okay. You, you I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Chairman, all those, 
If we could clarify that the motion includes adoption of the resolution as, as and the motion, the motion does include adoption of the resolution as presented by Mr. Popowitz. That's what he said. Okay. He that's said the recommendation of staff, which would include the resolution. Okay. Um, as, as a roll call vote, and, and Mr. Seeley seconded. As a roll call vote, Mr. Popowitz, how do you vote? Vote aye. Mr. Seeley, how do you vote? I vote aye. Mr. Akers, how do you vote? Aye. And I vote aye. Mr. Underwood being a property owner on that <laughs> same street but not affected by this condemnation, you choose to abstain. Right. Thank you. Okay, so the motion carries four to zero with one abstention. Now, Mr. Fincham, it's your turn. We've been missing you all day. Agenda item number five, the proposed zoning ordinance text amendment, text 03 2011, non conforming lots, use of structures, and section five, non conforming signs which is really what we're here to talk about, non-conforming signs that have fallen, and we're going to give them an opportunity to put them up uh, one time. Yes. Nutshell? In a nutshell, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, this ordinance amendment was actually requested by two uh, Board of Supervisors members related to uh, three specific properties uh, where we've had signs damaged uh, to an extent greater than 50% of the value of the sign structures. To that end, the proposed ordinance amendment would have a very limited effect and would not open up the county generally to the replacement of these types of non-conforming signs. It would be very specific to uh, the three instances that we have before us right now. Um, and the, the purpose of the signs was to uh, address um, uh, signage for businesses within the county uh, that have expressed concerns about loss of, of traffic, et cetera, et cetera, uh, because of, for example, the 652 relocation, um, um, things like that. So the proposed ordinance amendments are limited in scope. It only affects three existing conditions uh, and would not open up our off-site signage regulations generally throughout the county. Okay. Questions of Mr. Fincham? Questions of Mr. Fincham? No questions? Thank you, Mr. Fincham. We will declare the public hearing for the proposed zoning ordinance text amendment text 03-2011, Article 16, to be open. Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Hearing none, the public hearing is declared closed. How does the board wish to dispose of this item? Mr. Seeley. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that text amendment 03-211, Article 16 non-conforming lots and use of structures in section 5 non-conforming signs be approved as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Underwood. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. We have uh, agenda item number six which is the proposed privatization of the administration, management, operation, and management of the water and wastewater systems in Caroline County. Mr. Parton, uh, briefly, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have received, uh, as you're aware, an informal proposal from uh, American States Utility Services to uh, take over the maintenance and operation of the county's water and wastewater uh, systems. Um, there are two components to the proposal, as I said before. One is a uh, general description of the company and how they would uh, provide the, re the required services. And the other is a financial piece that would be discussed in closed meeting if the board uh, wants to do so tonight. Uh, the proposal uh, arrived uh, last Wednesday. And uh, with that short time frame and the absence of Mr. Schiebel, staff has not had an opportunity to, uh, to review it in any uh, depth at all. And um, so would like an opportunity uh, to do that. Um, in the event the board is interested in, after seeing this uh, proposal, which the, the purpose is to give the board a, a better 
idea of what uh, some of the numbers may look like if it wanted to uh, go through the procurement process for, uh, for privatization of these services. But staff would uh, like an opportunity to, to analyze it thoroughly. Uh, obviously, this is a, uh, a major change in county operations and uh, should not be taken lightly. Uh, certainly, if the end result is that the county can achieve improvements in efficiency and uh, at a better cost, then uh, we, we should go that direction. But uh, there's a lot of analysis that goes into that before uh, a decision of that magnitude is made. All right. Thank you, Mr. Parton. Um, I think most of the board members got this today or in, when their packet was delivered. Mr. Popowitz, I know you were looking in particular at this uh, project in this process, um, you know, in light of what, what, what Mr. Pardon said and, and with the absence of Mr. Schiebel, you know, I feel kind of comfortable that we at least delay this, but I figure we ought to at least hear from you since you were closer than any other board member if you'd like to. Sure. And, and I don't have any problem with delaying it. Uh, I, I think that, um, that we, we, we have uh, an informal proposal. One of the things I, I think that the, the company that, that sent this to us would like to do is, is possibly a, 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 a um, public-private proposal, unsolicited proposal to us. But I think that, that we owe it to uh, uh, ourselves and to the citizens to at least look at the pricing at some point. It doesn't necessarily have to be tonight. Maybe the next board meeting would be fine. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably plenty of time to allow Mr. Schiebel a chance to look at it, uh, the rest of the staff to look at it. So what, one of the things that we did come back with was that we wanted we did want staff to look at that and and it make sure that, that that what they are proposing was in in line number one number two if there's some th components in there that maybe we can uh, uh, do some hybridization on and, and some other options that are also out there so that it you get the get more information as much information as you possibly can for this. okay I, I think that's that's fair um, there are representatives from American states here. Would you gentlemen, although we don't normally do this, would you gentlemen like to have something to say briefly? Mr. Chairman, board, good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Fisher. I'm Lynn Steinle. Um, we're with the uh, subsidiary of American States Utility Services. We don't have a presentation for you tonight. Um, our information's in the, in the informal proposal, as Mr. Parton stated. Um, but we are available to answer any questions you may have, and okay. um, we certainly uh, uh, appreciate the opportunity and the discussions we've had with staff and, and, and others um, about this opportunity. Okay. Well, we, we, we sure appreciate it. Um, if I could ask you this one question, do you consider what you've submitted to us to be an unsolicited proposal that we could proceed under the Public-Private Partnership Act? I, I don't believe that it, it, it's very close. Um, and from our perspective, the, the, the proposal, for lack of a better term, is very close, but I don't believe it has all of the I's dotted and T's crossed. Um, I believe that the unsolicited proposal guidelines require a filing fee, for example, which we did not submit, and there's some other items that, uh, um, that I think we would need to uh, address. Um, if, there is, if there is still interest after reviewing this, and if, if upon your review and staff's review, you do find that it looks like it's a... Uh, would be a benefit um, or have some added value to the county. We certainly are, are willing to quickly turn this around and make it the formal submission. Okay. I'm getting advice from legal counsel. Right. <laughs> <Sir. Which laughs> I need a lot because I like dance on the edge. Uh, which is why I asked you if it was a unsolicited proposal, which kind of it Actually, is, but it not really a PPEA. And um, it's, it's a statement of interest is probably a better way of okay. phrasing it. It's probably what should have been put on the uh, document. And 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 Mrs. Uh, Neil Cosby was just informing me that that it may not necessarily fit the requirements of a PPEA project. It's not a capital. Thing. It's not the wastewater treatment plan. It's not a new school. Well, it's we, privatizing something. If you guys know it is, that's well, fine. We, we believe that it is. We've, we've um, actually gone through this, um, through this process, and I believe that the Commonwealth of Virginia is actually awarding 
a similar type and scope of project for the Fort Monroe Authority down in Hampton, okay. which is a, a utilities only um, you know, maintenance operation. Right. Um, so that that's you know, we believe that this falls in, in this in that same guideline there. Okay. Well, we're we're going to look at it. We'll get further clarification from our legal staff just to make okay. sure. Um, and then we will probably discuss it more at length at our December 13th meeting. Um, I don't know if you gentlemen would like to come back, but if we have some questions, it might be good that you're here. If, if we'd, we'd if, be happy to. Yeah. Okay. We'd be happy to return if, if, if you'd like for us to. I think it might be in your best interest. Yes, sir. We'll okay. be there then. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I am. Actually, because if I had to be somewhere tomorrow morning, we wouldn't be here till 11 o'clock, but I don't have to. So we're going to stay longer for whatever reason. We're going to figure out a reason to stay longer here. Yes, ma'am. Oh, gentlemen, if you'll wait one second. Okay. Um, so we probably, that was the only thing we had in executive session? That's So we are, um, we're done. Well, we're done because we had to pull all, all the utility things off. Okay. All right. We did the county administrator report. Uh, closing board comments, Mr. Underwood. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Quinn Rivers built several homes in the Reedy Church District, and... I've had a number of complaints. I think they were built in 2008, 2000, or 2009. Um, and I hate to say this, but the majority of the work was substandard. Uh, consequently, a number of those homeowners are having difficulty, um, cabinets falling off the wall, um, doors falling off hinges, um, electrical outlets, um, fusing, arcing. Um, I don't know what can be done or what we can do to hold Quinn Rivers accountable, but I think it's unfair that we've put people in situations where they're paying for homes that are, are, are not of quality. I don't know what we can do, but I'd ask this board to, to ask you, Mr. Chairman, to ask the county administrator interim to look into what can be done to go back and hold people accountable for the quality or lack of quality of work that was, that was done in building these homes in Quinn River. Now, I do recall a lot of that was... Uh, federal and state money that we use Quinn Rivers to administer and, and I guess manage those projects. So I'm going to ask Mr. Parton if he could follow up with the folks at Quinn Rivers. Um, I'm not sure what we can do. <coughs> they administered the funds, right? Various builders use. And they contracted some of the workout subcontract, I think. Kevin's here. Yeah, but that, I mean, he may or may not have inspected those things. You inspected those? Yes, we've inspected them, and I've worked with Mr. Parton. All the complaints that we have, I personally go and inspect. The, the problem we're having is by the building code, they're covered for two years at the, after the date of occupancy, and most of them fall within three, four years, and most times we go down and we find out their abuse. The ones that were substandard or were code issues that fall within the two years, we have repaired and we've done one as late as a month ago that I went down and addressed and took care of the issues. So, so Mr. Underwood, these are all new, I would guess, and we can get those and I will go down and visit them and inspect and see what the issues are. Yes, sir. I have a couple names for you. Okay. Yes, sir. They just haven't worked. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's make sure we keep the process going. You get those names to Mr. Parton. Right. Mr. Parton, I'll have Mr. Uh, Whiteman go out there and check those, and we can go from there. Okay. That's it. All right, Ms. Popwitz. Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the board members who are returning on uh, 
on elections one. And for our new board members, uh, board members elect, uh, Mr. Black and, uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Taylor. Um, congratulate them for their uh, winning their elections. And um, looking forward to, uh, and I hope that uh, all the best for this board in the coming years. And, uh, and uh, just to say real quick, of course, I'll probably expand on this in December. Uh, I have enjoyed my time on this board, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your input and whether we've agreed or disagreed doesn't really matter. I think that everybody here has the best uh, uh, of the county at heart. So thank you all. Thank you for those comments, Mr. Popowitz, and that's, that's kind of where we tried to work it. So. Okay, Ms. Silly? I have no closing comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Akers? No, sir. All right, I have one. And it is with deep regret that I bring this one up. And I'm extremely disappointed to have to bring it up. But I'm going to ask Mr. Parton if he will advertise for a county administrator. Since obviously my sales skills are not what they used to be. Um, so if you could start the advertising process. I, I thought we'd said before we'd try to get a notice out late November, December, and maybe get a pool of candidates and start looking at some folks in January. So we could do that. You want to change your mind? One last thing? All right. I tried again. So, all right. Uh, that was it for me for closing comments. We are going to adjourn to our December 6th meeting with the school board. And uh, I'm inviting Mr. Black, uh, which I have already. Uh, and I'm inviting all of the school board elect members. Um, and uh, Mr. Taylor also, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so what will be our existing boards, existing board of supervisors, and existing school board will be there as the main discussion folks. And the board of supervisors in 2012 and the, board, the school board in 2012 will be there just so we can all kind of go into this with eyes wide open and, and they'll know what's going on and we'll know what's going on, at least from there. So, unless you guys, it's only 820, but unless you guys want to, Mrs. Lambert is going to be able to talk to Mrs. Cosby because she's still on the clock with us for a little while longer. So you'll have your five or ten minutes right now. And we're going to adjourn to that meeting as soon as I get a motion to do so. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Popowitz. All in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned until December.